Okay, so um, just to briefly remind you all of the structure of the CIEHS, um, <clears throat> we have an administrative core, which includes the career development program, which provides mentoring to junior faculty and postdocs who are about to transition. Uh, and we have the tracking and evaluation program directed by Dr. Antle that you get surveys from. We really appreciate you filling out those surveys because we're going to use those data both to direct where we might change things and also for reporting purposes. We have an integrated health science facility core and you'll notice this green entry, greens for money, right? <laughs> so uh, the, the other source of funding is our research voucher programs. So there's one in the Integrated Health Science Facility Core to help investigators bring their studies to human studies, right? Or sometimes to take them from cell culture to animal. So it's translation using the um, NIEHS translation framework. Our community, in, so that, that core is led by Dr. Matt Cave. The community engagement core led by Dr. Luz Huntington Moskas. Uh, it interfaces the center with the community. She does a lot of outreach. She also partners with folks who are doing community engaged work and research. Uh, it's a great resource. You should talk to them and they've been updating their website regularly. It's really getting quite dynamic. The other big source of green that you just heard about is the pilot project program. Our bio, so that's directed by Dr. Amanda LeBlanc that you just heard. And the uh, Biostatistics and Informatics Facility Core, directed by Dr. Shesh Rai, will uh, provide a wide variety of services, uh, power analysis, uh, statistical analysis. He helps with the bioinformatics and also an analysis of large data sets. So you should talk to him, look on the website. They've got some information there. Then the other source of funds, direct funds, the research voucher fund, is the uh, Integrated Toxicomics and Environmental Measurement Facility Core. These research vouchers are mostly towards uh, using the other established facility cores in the university, such as the genomics core. We've got Sabina Weigel back here. Um, so she has done a lot of work for us through these, these vouchers as well. Okay, so are there any questions on those? So the, the research vouchers come in three flavors. There's a small one. So if you've got a, a, a manuscript review where they're asking for some study that you could do in a, phys, a facility core, you can get up to 1500 bucks to do that study and get your paper published, things like that. Or if you've got a grant and it just needs a small prod experiment for preliminary data to put it over, the small one there. There's a, a medium-sized voucher so if you've got a new area you want to go try out and start to spearhead, but it's not quite ready for a full pilot project, that's what that's for. It's up to $5,000. There's a large one, which is that if you've got a funded project and all our grants get cut, right? So we've all had to trim back on our aims, but if you have an omics aim in there that can be fulfilled, then we'll give you some money to do that. All right, so the big thing is the SWOT discussion for those who aren't familiar with that acronym, that's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So we're gonna go through things one at a time. I collected some ideas from our internal advisory uh, committee, which are in here, some strengths, and then I'd like to hear your comments. And, and we can just go through them one at a time. So one strength that we have here at CIHS is that we have a wide diversity of expertise and interests amongst our investigators. We have a lot of interdisciplinary investigators and a lot of interdisciplinary uh, research going on. So we would really like to promote that even more. Um, so I don't know how people feel about that. Do you all agree with that as a strength? And hopefully you're taking advantage of your colleagues' expertise and collaborating. We have... Um, fair amount of resources. So we have the two facility cores I just mentioned, plus the pilot funds you just heard about, and the research vouchers. 
And in our first two years, we've actually distributed about a half a million dollars in pilot funds and research vouchers. So uh, we are a major funding agency on this campus. <laughs> Um, and the goal is to stimulate collaboration between CIEHS investigators and award recipients so we can bring people in and also promote collaboration within. So one of the things we get judged on when we go in for the competitive re renewal is the number of collaborative publications and the number of multi-investigator grants. All right, so that, that's kind of the gold standard of what we're trying to, to achieve. Um, one of our IEC members said we have an excellent leadership team. So most of the uh, leadership, the senior leadership, are established investigators, respected in their fields. And the core leaders are, are dynamite, actually, and they're very helpful people. And the success of the community-led projects so far and uh, the Community Engagement Corps helping to uh, get new ones started. So. I've, as was mentioned, I distributed some news articles and things of environmental uh, concerns here in Kentucky within our western Kentucky area. Uh, hopefully they tickled your interest. One of the things that we started doing was to publicize member accomplishments, which is publications and new grants. And as part of that and part of our uh, lay outreach, shall we say, is we're asking investigators to give a one or two sentence summary of the importance and impact of that publication. Because when you just put the list of publication, nobody really cares, let's face it, right? <laughs> so what is it that's gonna interest people to actually go look at that paper, right? And that's why we're asking you for that. So please cooperate with Sarah when she sends out those emails to uh, ask you for that, <clears throat> that one or two sentences. It's very important. Any questions on that one in particular? You get a lot of emails from us, I know. <laughs> so our, our career development program is seems to be strong. Uh, we have about 12 or 13 mentees and the anecdotal uh, feedback I've gotten has been positive. Uh, we are going to be sending out surveys <laughs> to uh, gather data and, and find out how you really feel. But uh, we really need your feedback and we need to know what we're doing right and, and what we could improve on and what you really need if there's other things we can do in that program. We're, we're really concerned about that. Um, one of the other things uh, we have done is to recruit new investigators, including physicians. Hi, Loretta. <laughs> to EHS research. Um, and, and that's an important aspect from when we go in for renewal as well. They're going to want to see that translational activity. So we interact with the NIEHS T32, which was renewed, and with the Superfund, the P42 grant, uh, which scored well. We don't know whether or not that will get it refunded or not. And uh, we have an R35 River Award from NIEHS, which is a prestigious award that was just uh, received by our deputy director, Dr. John Wise. We also have interactions, collaborations that are being established in, uh, with other P30 centers, which include Emory, which has a fantastic metabolomics facility. So if you're interested in metabolomics, uh, talk to Matt Cave, because he's the main connection there. Um, it's absolutely fabulous. Um, things going on with UK, especially with the Community Engagement Corps. Uh, Wayne State University, we've had some of our uh, junior investor, early stage investigators participate in workshops with them. And uh, there's other interactions going on. And then there's things with, with other P30s as well. So uh, questions, comments? Speak up. <laughs> we got a lot going on. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I mean, this is not considered to be a comprehensive list. We're, 
you know, what else do you see as the strengths of the centers? So our emphasis on anti-racism education, that's great. You writing this down? <laughs> Any other suggestions? What else do people see is loose? Um, that used the park, that used the program, the evaluation. Um, I think that 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 the way that you pull that together is pretty new for the centers in general. So I think you're ahead of the curve on that, and I think. Um, Becky's approach is quite substantial because we in the PEPH had a webinar and what they were doing was great, but Becky does all that. So I, don't, <laughs> I think it's a way ahead of her. Okay, so our tracking and evaluation things. Uh, I'm, I'm coming to home. I'm after a, a physician at Purdue with CIHS. We got two, uh, two awards from CIHS. I would say, you know, for me, uh, as a physician, it's, it's, it's pretty new to me with the same, but I think that if yes, I see I understand that I really feel like it was support pretty well by my people. So not as one person, but this is, you know, a group of people that really guide me through the process. So I really appreciate that. I think that's, you know, one of the biggest strengths that I can see. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead, Rita. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> so, so what do you think about our social media output? Do you, do you get those? So what do we, what do we do? Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. Okay, so opportunity, share, share, retweet, relink, whatever it is. Can't follow us because I'm like in a secret tangle or something that I can't find you because I've been trying to stalk everyone. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so that's one thing, which is to, to go on the main page and to do the follow and then you'll get the feed, right, to see our announcements. And so, I mean, that's also one of the things we not, not only put the uh, publications and grants on our website, Sarah puts them out on the social media as well. So we're trying to do that um, not all in a batch, but like one at a time. And uh, I think it's getting some interest. Uh, the NIEHS program also asked us to include their hashtag in so they can keep track of what we're doing. All right. So. So that's another aspect of the social media is that they're actually tracking social media at NIEHS and uh, seeing what the centers are up to. And speaking of the NIEHS and their website, they also have highlights from the centers where they will put a little blurb on a particular uh, early stage investigator or whatever. And you might check that out with some frequency to just see what's going on in the other centers as well. That's all good. Any other suggestions? No? All right. Weaknesses can always improve, right? So um, this was uh, raised as a weakness, which is getting people to present at the rig meetings or the seminars and particularly uh, the junior faculty. So the rig meetings, you should take the opportunity to present your ideas and get some feedback, not as a seminar. So they're very, very informal and they're, they're these opportunities to develop your ideas. So don't be afraid, right? It's, it's probably the friendliest audience you'll have, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but it's a great opportunity to get your ideas threshed out and see if you're on track or not, right? See what other scientists have to say in a friendly environment before you get to the study section stage, because they're ruthless, okay? <laughs> so um, that's, that's one weakness, is we need more participation, especially by 
our early stage faculty in presenting their ideas in the rig meetings. And also for those who are in the career development program to uh, treat it more as a feedback session than a seminar. All right. Yeah, Jane. Right. So, so in the career development program, we've just got the early stage investigators primarily, right? And that's a peer mentoring situation. But for what you're talking about, for more senior people, that's the rig meetings, right? And the other thing is, if you think the rig meetings, do you all think that they're meeting often enough? Do they need to meet more frequently? Right now, most of them are just meeting quarterly. Do they need to? I know you don't want any more meetings, but if you if you don't think of them as a meeting, but you think of them as opportunities to develop collaborations and feedback, I think it's it's a different thing. So personally, I don't think you, you all meet enough. To, to really get things going. You know, we're spread out throughout the campuses, <laughs> right? And don't see each other very often. Um, and a lot of those collaborations could be better across the buildings and the campuses to, to combine talents. So think about that. Um, attendance of seminars. So our seminars are actually well attended, but that's because we hold them in the Department of Pharmacology and Toxicology, and most of those students are attending. Our center membership attendance is somewhat modest. Um, yeah. We've been operating all under COVID. <laughs> so we don't have, we didn't exist. Right. So we started in July 2020. Right. So we've only been around for 15, 16 months. Right. So um, uh, one individual raised the thing that the number of investigators with primary CIEH affiliation is low. And I think what that refers to is that uh, a number of us, like me, are members of multiple centers. But Many have their primary allegiance to a center other than CIEHS. And so we need to develop some focus in here. I'm not saying that folks that are members of multiple centers need to change what they're doing, but we need to develop more, uh, what shall we say, cognizance of CIEHS membership and what it entails and how you can contribute, right? So there's a lot of benefits but the benefits accrue through people contributing. Yeah. Um, so that's that I guess that's another question. You should be mentioning the center in your resources and environment statement. Right, you should have that. You should mention the facility course that you might use and what's there. Right, um, I don't think you're going to be using the metabolomics core offhand or something like that, but you might be consulting Shesh or something, right, on some of the statistics. So, you definitely should include the center in your resource and environment statement on your grant applications. Uh, only list if you've got an award from us, financial award, right? So that would come under your other support section. And also, when you put in your TCM or whatever, list you as a reference. Right. Yep. So, on the, so one of our sources of funds to fund the research vouchers is the what they call CRIF around here. So, a fraction of the FNA goes to the centers that you designate on the PCF form, the proposal clearance form that goes into grants management. So that's very important. And uh, if you're a member of 
multiple centers, you can list two or three, and it's just shared. But that's that's really vital to keep the programs going, uh, is to put CIEHS down on that PCF form. Thank you. Okay, and then our rigs. So our neurodevelopmental tox and cancer rigs are relatively small, and our multi-organ toxicology rig is enormous. All right, so. I'm not quite sure what to do about that, but I'll leave that up to the membership. And there might be opportunities there in terms of the MOT. You know, perhaps it, it should break up into sub rigs or something and then meet as a whole group occasionally. So maybe once a quarter meet as a group and the other months uh, organ specific toxicology. I don't know. I'm trying to be provocative here. It's a little bit of both, I think. So with the number of people that you have, if uh, an MOT rig member is only giving a seminar once every three months, it'll be seven years or more before everybody gets through, right? So you need to... No, what, what I was suggesting. No, um, we need to develop the two smaller rigs. But the, the MOT, what I suggested is that it consider breaking into sub rigs. So maybe one where the emphasis is mostly, say, on liver and another that the emphasis is mostly on heart. And then periodically get together so you can talk about the crosstalk between the organs, right? Um, just to get things moving a little bit more and get people more familiar with what's going on. You know, and, and the other option is, is we, we, if people want, we can find other venues to have seminars. You don't have to stick to once a month and once a quarter per, per rig. We can, we can do other things. So. Okay, so um, let, me, let me clarify something. So each member has a primary affiliation with one rig, okay? There's nothing prohibiting people from attending other rig meetings, all right? So that's, that's fine. It's just that in our original application, we had some people who were members of more than one rig and we got beat up pretty badly for it. <laughs> so, so officially, people are, have a primary affiliation with one research interest group. But that doesn't say you can't go to and attend an, a different rig meeting as well, right? In fact, I encourage that. Yeah, right, so, you know, but, but think about whether or not it would be helpful to subdivide within the MOT to, to maybe stimulate things a little bit more. Okay, so any other weaknesses? Why well, are we gonna have some more? Cindy. <laughs> really slow, and especially for those of us who have been teaching loads and depend on having a summer with money, that was a weakness, not the money in the last summer. And I 
and the, the resolution is to have the cost extended. Right. We have not been able to extend through the next right. summer. We would block the so we had some some growing pains, shall we say, um, and some some crazy rules from the NIH. So the crazy rules from the NIH is that on March 31st, our funds for that fiscal year are done, and anything we haven't spent goes back, <laughs> right? And so. We didn't have the means to immediately backfill those. We're, we're working it out with program how to do that. And thank God for Colleen, because the amount of paperwork and shuffling funds back and forth is mind boggling. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, is anything that involves human studies or animal studies has got to have those clearances. And then and on top of that, the human studies had to go through program. At NIEHS. So we have talked with Dr. Thompson, and she sees that problem because it can delay things by three, four months. And she has been working on trying to resolve that so that once we have a clearance, as long as we get it through the local IRB, we're good. So hopefully that will be in place. It's another reason why we're starting like the pilot project applications early so that we have essentially two months to get them reviewed for the science and the and the and then if there's anything that has to be reviewed by program still at NIEHS we might be able to get them done before the summer all right but those some of those are a little out of our control no i understand that. yeah I think being able to uh, what you're saying about Yeah, so that's in place. Yeah, right. So that's in place now, and uh, we now also have the funds where we can we can finagle a little bit and and tide people over till um, the new funds come in because they're never there on April first, <laughs> right? So it's a mad scramble for that. But so we're now now that we're in our second year, we've gotten our institutional commitments, maybe. <laughs> So hopefully by the end of the month it'll be in place and so we've got a good buffer to take us into year three uh that would we just didn't have the funds up front and uh i, I was lucky to be able to get them to give them to us in the fiscal year and not wait till the end of the fiscal year so that that was a change to do because otherwise we, we couldn't operate but hopefully it'll be better you're right that, that was a big stumbling block Painful. Anything else? Right. Um, so this um, on this lab of presentation by Julian and Patrick, these are one-hour meetings, right? The rig meetings, yeah. So and this does this presentation have to be based on the work that is funded by the agent? No, no, that's what you want to do. Basically, in my view, it's they, they're the opportunities to present new specific games or even a, let's say you're putting a manuscript together you know and you want to present what you got there and get some feedback on that before you finalize the manuscript and send it out the door but mostly grant i i would emphasize grant ideas okay Well, they're welcome to attend the rig meetings that their mentors participate in. That's been standing now for over a year. Um, we instituted the travel award fund, right? Uh, we need more donations, by the way. <laughs> Payroll deduction works really well, 10 bucks a month. <laughs> if I can get five people to do $10 a month, that's one award. So yeah, so 
that that's one thing that we we did institute, which is directly to benefit postdocs and graduate students, is the travel award, right? So we'll give out up to five hundred bucks for people to go to a meeting, which I think is more than any other unit around here will give you. Uh -huh. So for undergraduates looking for a research opportunity, they have one place that I, as an undergraduate advisor, can send them to that would be within CIHS. Hmm. Not necessarily funding it, but just, you know, anyone who is interested in recruiting undergraduates, we have a huge pool of very interested and able students that sometimes have a hard time finding What's available? Right, we need somebody to spearhead that. Sorry. We need a volunteer to be the go to person. So th you could point them certainly to our website because people's research interests and stuff are all listed on there, right? So they could peruse that to find I'm something. Not that person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a biology honors director. Uh, but just for me to know if people want, you know, some way that people know that they should let me know to send people. OK, not everyone's send Colleen an email to distribute to the membership. Right. So that's the other thing. So Colleen created an, an email for the entire membership, CIEHS dash all. So you could just type that into the two box on an email. If you've got something that's of interest to a, a large number of people in the center, right, like. Whatever. Feel free to use it. Send it out. We're trying to increase communication as much as we can with this crazy restrictions we're under. Becky? Can I go as far as you want? And if you go, you can definitely have a conversation file that will fit it. Well, sure. We already have on the website where you can send the undergraduate to that and then come on the website where there's a project. Sorry, Becky. Uh-huh. Yeah, th th that list will change probably every summer, depending upon people's funding status and how many other programs they're committed to that year. So I would say a good time to solicit that information would be around February. Well, and that's when undergraduates are applying for the Center Research Program. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That they have when they have yep, that's. Yeah, because that's when the NCIR 25 applications are due, the SROP applications are due. So if you send out that e email to you know, collect names, then uh, I would do that in the beginning of February. CIEHS of all. <laughs> Anything else? Natalie. Yeah, you got booked for three things, I think, rather close together, yeah. if I recall correctly. But so the career development and, and the cancer rig, I would say you, you've got two slightly different audiences there, right? And you'll get feedback of a different quality from each of them, right? I'm not saying one's better than another, but just qualitatively that feedback will be different. And I would think I would view that more as an opportunity. Uh, but to, to pitch your ideas, right? And get that feedback. Anything else? Shall we move on? Okay, opportunities. So uh, 
in the news very recently, the PFAS pollution in Henderson uh, sent this out. Jamie's expressed some interest. If other people are interested, talk to Jamie. Uh, certainly some opportunities for community engagement there. So I sent the article out. It was on WFPL last week, I think. And um, there's a tremendous problem there where they've got PFAS pollution. I know there are people here who are interested in PFAS, you know, scientifically. So there might be some opportunity to generate something there. Uh, <clears throat> we had a large activity with the hemp processing in Cadiz. That plant has closed. But there is a new one, which is supposedly going to be even bigger across the river. So think about that. So that's VOCs primarily and particulates. Um, another opportunity is internal review of specific aims, somebody suggested. So perhaps we can organize a group of senior investigators in the CIEHS where people can send in specific aims page for a grant and get it critiqued. That's a, an opportunity. We can work on that if people are interested. Do I hear interest? Yeah. I see a few nods. OK. And so the goal of that, obviously, is to improve grant applications. We want to get your grants funded. Um, recently uh, learned that NIEHS program is going to allow us to get supplements uh, to recruit underrepresented minority junior faculty as part of our career development program. I will take credit for putting that seed in the program officer's mind. Because when I first asked her about it, she was very puzzled. And how can you use a supplement? I said, that's what the career development program is all about. She said, oh, so, so she talked to the up the ladder and they came back and they said, yeah, you can do that. So so that's an opportunity we hope to take advantage of. And that would be for the new fiscal year. So they don't start in the middle of the year, they start the beginning of fiscal year. So that would be for a start date of April 1. Talk a little bit more about how that would work. So um, you assume that the program that's aligned would be through a department and the CIHS um, so what I haven't gotten an answer yet from them on is how much supply funds would be there. So the, the regular supplements are for like a research grant, right? So if I've got an R01 and I guess Natasha, you're on one, right? Uh, a supplement to a Rooney's grant, right? So the project is related but distinct from the main grant. The supplement provides, I think, up to 75% salary support, but a very, fairly limited amount of supply money. So our career development program relies upon pilot project funding towards, you could consider that startup, it's certainly not a lot towards startup, and up to 75% salary support. So what I've asked them is if, and I haven't gotten this answer yet, is whether or not the supply side could be like $50,000 so that we could do the pilot project. So that's, I'm waiting. Sometimes emails to NIHS program are like throwing things in a black hole, but you bug them enough and they finally get back to you. So hopefully we can take advantage of that. Um, and other opportunities are increased interactions with other U of L centers. So better interaction with the Superfund, better interactions with the Cobras. Uh, those are opportunities. So if anybody has ideas on how we might stimulate those, you know, speak up, send it to me. All right, so we've got folks who are members of those things here. <laughs> so I think you know what I'm going to open thing to get the, the training, get the training, the training, because some of them are hard talk to do this, but some are not. And to invite them to some of these meetings, so they could um, 
um, get more exposure to this one to encourage experience that investigators experience. Um, and also with community engagement because it's big part of the system point to any development big part of the community engagement. And we can really do a lot of that, but it's just super fun because of the different things happening in the past. But um, but moving forward, we have getting the design speaker to be involved in some of the community connectivity. Okay. Uh huh. So how would you propose we do that? That would be fine. And recruit their mentors if they're not CIEHS members, you know, talk to them. Get them done. That would be the idea is bring them in, collaborate. You know, I'm sure there's ways that many of us can collaborate with those folks. So I'd say half the people in the super fund are actually MOT members on paper at least. So it's a matter of getting them to come over. You know, definitely get them to. So one way that we can reach out also is to volunteer to present in the Environment Institute seminar series, right? So most of the people who are attending that seminar are um, either in the DOC or the Superfund. Not all, but most. And and some of us have presented there. Natasha's presented there, you know. So there there is crossover. I'm not saying there's not crossover. What we need is more more crossover and perhaps more collaboration would be ideal. Okay. Other ideas? It's getting late. Maybe that's something can go back to that committee is open houses. Right? What do you think? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you could also have open houses for non bench parts of it, like we always do the AFC. Yeah. But we hardly know how to get to the data they get. So, you know, what are the top steps from getting the genomic data to getting what to get data? Right, so we, we, there was a um, facility core symposium at Research Louisville. I couldn't attend it, but um, I, I assume that they, 
Right, maybe Sabine, you can tell a little bit about that for the folks who missed it. There should be a recording of that. I'm not quite sure where it's posted, um, but I, I'm sure I can find out and send to you if you wanted to see that. But it was a um, summary of all the cores we were able to identify. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so there's a major effort going on. Uh, got, spearheaded by the EVPRI's office. There's a committee of some few core leaders to kind of get things organized in terms of the facility cores university wide. And I just get them so that people are more aware of what's there and to smooth out the functioning. And part of that is gonna be the advertising and whatnot. So yeah, I'll ask Bonnie Dean, she probably has the, the recording and uh, maybe we'll post a link to it. Okay. Yeah, Sarah, would you send me an email to get the link for the core presentation at Research Louisville for you? And then we can make all the mouse part of Research Louisville but as general going forward because everybody is already uh, interested in learning about course. Uh -huh. Could you send that suggestion to Bonnie? Right, because she's the chief organizer at that level. And, you know, she'll she'll keep track of that. I'll forget. You know, I'll admit I've got CRS. Um, so, but but Bonnie like has I don't know where she keeps it, but she keeps track of all these ideas and and then brings them up to the committee and. Uh, Definitely, definitely. If we can organize something like that, that would be wonderful. Anything else in terms of opportunities? Okay, threats. Okay, the big threat is the NIEHS P30 program is zero sum, right? We were very lucky. They hadn't expanded the program in well over a decade. And when we went in, we and UCSF scored so well that they expanded it by two. They are now looking to retract. So the competition is really intense. Um, Got to get better than a 25 to get funded. <laughs> so what are the key factors? We got to keep our NIEHS funding up. Um, grants are going to end, right? Not necessarily get renewed. And we got to have new ones coming in to replace them. So get those applications in, sorry, earmark them to NIEHS. Currently, uh, they changed the formula since we went in. When we went in, it was based on dollars, direct cost dollars. Now it's on number of grants. Got to have at least, so that's a minimum, six grants and four PIs. And, and they're R01s, R21s, P grants, U's and K's. Right. So unfortunately, R15s, they don't count. And training grants, they don't count. Um, so that's a big one. And, and that's what the cash is for, right, is to promote that. So please, please, please. Any questions? We will be writing it two years from now. That is unbelievably close, <laughs> right? So, I mean, if you if you start now getting a grant in in February and then you got to it'll get reviewed in June, you might resubmit it again in November, right? And it wouldn't be funded until April of the next year. So, I mean, it's like got to get those in. It's a long lag time. Um, the other thing is I mentioned this earlier, collaborating papers and grants. So this gets back to getting, getting together to work on projects and use each other's talents to make the product better. Uh, that, that's a key element that they look at. And uh, yeah. Also, need to be able to break that down by collaboration with the IEHS 
members All right. So Sarah gets a output from PubMed monthly, right? But, but not everything gets into PubMed, right? So that's why we need the spreadsheet is to make sure that we've caught everything and because we're going to be putting it in tables in the renewal. Um, yeah, anything. Yeah, everything. Yep. Yeah, so any collaborative effort, right? Papers, grants. Um, and then they're going to evaluate, the, as they call it, the return on investment, right, in terms of new grants. So uh, we spent X dollars on pilot funds and research vouchers. How much in grant funding came back in new grants? That, that's a metric that's going to be very important. So um, please, please, please turn those pilot grant funds and research voucher funds into new grants. That's what we need. Any other threats people can think of? No? Comments? I'm done. <laughs>